This, this meeting is about what is. Which is, is a very misleading statement. Because it sounds like it's about something that there's an object that this meeting is about. So what is, what is, is the question. There's actually no answer to that. The, there, there might be an experience that one would say, what is, is what's happening to me. So for me, what is, is sitting in the room, hearing this weird guy talk, being with other people, hearing the cars go by, seeing the sun. That would be the experience for the individual or for the perceiver of what is. That's not actually what's being pointed to in this meeting. What's being pointed to is that what is, is not an object. It's not knowable. It's not a perception. It's not even what is. It's what is and isn't. Now, it sounds like a paradox because words are objects, are concepts. So they, they just appear to be things. And what we're pointing to is no thing that appears to be a thing. And words are very limited when it comes to that. So really what we're talking about is beyond the words. The words are, in a sense, pointers. So we're, we're pointing to sound as stillness, an object as unicity, as movement as everything or the absolute. It's not a paradox, it's just unknowable, non-objectifiable. And that non-objectifiable, which we're suggesting, is all there is. There isn't anything else. That non-objectifiable, which is this happening, is literally unconditional love, is literally home, peace beyond conception, needless fulfillment, If there's someone listening to this, men an individual in that body that thinks they understand the words, they'll misunderstand what's being suggested. They'll understand that this has the experience of peace beyond understanding. This has the experience of unconditional love. This knows something that does, doesn't know. That's absolutely not what's being suggested. What's being suggested is that what's being described will never be had. The seeking for it is an absolute failed effort because it will never succeed in having what is already. Wanting to have what is already hides what's happening, hides what is as described, makes it seem like something's missing. And that which hides what this is, is an experience. It's an experience that arises out of a contracted energy in the body. That contracted energy in the body is all pervasive, meaning it's impossible to object objectify. It is literally only recognized in its completeness when it falls away. That contrast makes obvious how profound the body was influenced by that contraction. And that contraction has as a center knowing. It functions, it's gasoline, its motor runs on knowing. And knowing hides this as everything as was described. So, just so that we're clear, what's being described here is the absolutely last thing that that experience of contracted knowing wants to hear. It's the death of it. It's the end of it. It's the end of knowing.
so it's just gone and then the illusion doesn't appear again? Well, it doesn't, it's not only that it doesn't appear again, it's even stranger. And when it when it goes, it's part of that is the recognition that it actually never happened. What can happen is there can be certain rec- recognitions or realizations that there's no me, but that isn't actually the end of the me of that experience. So those glimpses are really different from the actual falling away. In in that they are recognizable. In that, there's a contrast. Because in the contrast, there seems to be somebody that knows something happened. When there's no one left, no one knows there's no one left. Yeah. So the individual, if there's a glimpse and it's not there, it will come back and go, oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Or I hated that. Either one, both of those can happen. That was terrifying. That was wonderful. That was amazing. That was completely unexpected. All those things. Own that. But that in itself is not the returning of an individual. It's just. Yes, it is. But it doesn't really. I mean, it's. It, uh, because if if what if it was actually glimpsed and seen that it is that way, then. It, it, it makes sense to me that it never comes back, but um, the feeling is um, there, and it's like um, it never comes back, but you forget that it went away or something. <laughs> you seem to forget that it went away, or something like that. Happened. I'm not. You forget that you had a glimpse. Yeah, you. Um, I mean, you have the glimpse, and then you see that. This is the only way it can be. Yeah. Um. And then me comes back, thinks yeah. it knows what happened, and tries to find it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The end of me isn't knowing what happened, isn't knowing this is unconditional love, it's no longer looking for anything. But nothing really changes because the illusion was never there. Depends on how you talk about it. Absolutely, nothing changes. So and everything is so, different. Yes. Um, so everything. So someone could seem to be totally caught in the illusion of me, and nothing could change um, in terms of content. But I don't agree with that. Okay. The me, because of the energy of it, attaches itself to the emotions and feelings that arises. It's sort of an, it's, that's part of its search, actually, is taking responsibility or ownership of everything that arises, because the sense of it is if I can collect everything to myself, I will become whole. That has an effect on the thoughts and the feelings. It gives them energy. So they start to go around in sort of circles. I'm a bad person, if I were just better, this wouldn't be happening, anything like that, you know, any of those things. When there's no one left, there's no one that attaches itself to those thoughts and feelings. So not only do they quiet down, but they don't get enough energy to go around in circles. Because in one sense, nobody really cares. Then how was it ever possible for... I mean, if, if there is no one, how can there seem to be someone who attaches himself to everything. Totally. Absolutely. He asked how. I don't know. (laughs) There's no answer. It's a good question. There's no answer to that. I mean, I could talk a little bit about how the, in the, it only happens in the dream of the individual, in the arising of a center, which there's not. That arising says that what's happening is real. Therefore, it's meaningful, purposeful. It's happening to me. And through that energy, it attaches and gives energy to thoughts. But how does that happen? It's just what seems to happen. Why does it happen? There's no answer to that. It's not logical. It's not logical to say that something that apparently happened never happened.
What do you mean with the with the end of knowing? The end of knowing, the end of the knower, the end of experience. There's no I not to know. I and knowing are the same thing. I arises with the experience of knowing. So I never know I'm not. Yeah, but nobody knows that. Right, but still the sense is... Sense is happening for nobody. Experience is a subject-object relationship. So the end of the experience is the end of the subject, which is the end of an object. I think I experienced that sometimes I'm more I and contracted, and sometimes I'm less. Okay. Like in a stress situation, I'm more contract, there's more contraction and more I and more defense strategies. And then, you know, when everything is easy, then then I somehow forget that I'm here. Yeah. But this comes and goes. Yeah, that's not really what we're talking about. <laughs> more or less I. <laughs> Just because you feel good doesn't mean there's less I. <laughs> This isn't about feeling better or feeling less tense. The tension we're talking about is not objectifiable. It's so intrinsic to the experience of the body and the individual that it can't step back from it and say, there's less of it or more of it. Thoughts are still coming and going, and even thoughts like I should do that or I'm I'm watching something now. Even these kind of thoughts are still coming and going. Yeah, I'm watching something now. I'm not I'm watching something That's now. Me. I I'm doing something. No. 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 Just thoughts. Thoughts. Yeah. And because the feeling to be so long is, you say, is something that you feel in the body, but also thoughts like, okay, now I'm looking at the flowers. Yeah. And it's also... No, that doesn't happen anymore. There isn't anybody to look. even at the bad drivers. Nobody sees bad drivers, but bad drivers still apparently happen. <laughs> and the wish and the wish for rockets in my car apparently arises. <laughs> So 
So one could say you don't know who you are. You don't either know. <laughs> <laughs> we talked yesterday, I can't remember what the point was about how the me doesn't follow thoughts to the end. <clears throat> you can't find you. That's what that's what self inquiry is about. It's, it's, uh, the individual is like a nail in the sky. <clears throat> There's actually no support. <laughs> and that's the picture. Yeah. <laughs> So we can do, we can't do anything. Does no, no, no. <clears throat> it's really hard for people to get this. It's really not that you can't do anything. Things happen, apparently. The message truly is, there's no you. And this death of the me? Yeah, is a dream. So it's part of a story. It doesn't happen. The death of me is the recognition by no one that there never was a me. And this recognition appears in some bodies and in other bodies never appears. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, and nobody can do anything. Well, there isn't anybody. Yeah. The recognition doesn't actually have anything to do with the thing you're sharing, right? The recognition the doesn't have anything to do with the thing that I'm sharing. There is a... <clears throat> you're talking about the recognition that there's no one. Yeah. That's a part of sort of the story of the message. But the message is truly, there's only what is and isn't. That's the message. That's, all, that's the whole message. What is there's the only what does and doesn't appear. What is and what is, is not, you say. What's that? Yes. What is and what isn't. Yes. What do you mean with what isn't? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is exactly the conundrum for the individual. Do you understand what I mean? It wants to know that this is and isn't. It wants to know this is the absolute. And that hides what this is and, and sets up a structure where it looks for the next experience. Hiding this as it is and isn't by wanting to know what it is. Nobody does that. That's not something that someone chooses to do. There is absolutely no free will and choice. That is simply what seems to happen. That ar arising out of a contracted energy in the body, a center that says, I am, arises, which says, I am real, which makes everything else appear to be real. The subject-object reality arises, and that reality, that subjective reality, then makes this appear to be real, and then creates the need to find that what's next, something that's going to make me feel better, the better experience, the next experience. And this is what isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we now? I don't know. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Gold star. <laughs> no, what isn't isn't an object. And the point is, what is isn't an object. There's no such thing as what is. <clears throat> what is and what isn't is the unicity that's unobjectifiable, that is everything. Mm -hmm. And there's no knowing. There's no way to know what that is. That is simply unconditional aliveness. And the suggestion is, that's all there is. Even the experience that there's a subject and object is unconditional aliveness, appearing as a subject and object, looking for unconditional aliveness, which is everything, already. But there is no in Well, I mean, like where my car is, <laughs> but not what this is, and not where that apparent knowing comes from. There's simply the immediacy of what's happening, and that can appear as where the car is. 
and there is no problem with the problems, no? Ah. Uh, so that's the yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, But I, th I think that that just the response to the expectation of the individual that it really there really is a solution that fits its its ideas of what it means to be nobody or what it means to be enlightened that everything's great and I just live in a peaceful state and they're only and that's just for me idealism. And that tension is also made of unconditional love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pretty nuts. Yeah. Not for anybody though. Yeah. Because if it's somebody in there, then it sucks. <laughs> And if there's nobody in there, it's not for anyone. <laughs> And even the appearing of killing someone is unconditional. Love. Absolutely. Hitler was unconditional love yeah. appearing as Hitler. People don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> They like to talk about love. They don't like the unconditional bit. Because <laughs> it's the same as no thing or what isn't. Unconditional is what isn't. It's the same ungraspable. Same? Ungraspable, unhavable, unknowableness. Unconditional. I often have, have the experience of um, uh, like feeling a, a tension coming up. Um, Because of whatever, and in the first moment, it, it's it really it can hurt me. It kind of crunches me down, whatever the thought is, and um, then I might notice, okay, there's something, and I look at it, and then um, it's like I was thinking that that thought was my reality, and now I saw the thought, and something relaxes. Does that have anything to Nothing. do with what you're talking That's about? That's more in the direction of therapy. Mm -hmm. What the, the, the message is, is that the tension, the crushing, the recognizing, the letting go, is all the absolute appearing is that. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. The individual is in a world of things really happening. It's dependent on things happening because hope is in the future that what's going to happen is going to make its life better or good or fulfilled mm -hmm. or whatever. The reality is, which is the death of the individual, is nothing really happens. This isn't really happening. It only apparently happened. Mm -hmm. So I there's no... It's apparent um, seeing through illusion experiences or those somehow... You're talking about something... You're talking about really happening. Yeah. Really seeing through. Really da-da-da. Yeah. Really, really da-da-da. Nothing... That's all dream. That's all dream world stuff. Nothing ever really happens. That's why you can't say, why your question ran into a brick wall, because you can't say that recognizing this happens. You can't say that the absolute relative, the revelation, ah. happens, because it's never other. It's never other. Yeah. That is actually the end of happening, which isn't a happening. You could say it's yeah. a recognition for it's no crazy. one. That's crazy. Yeah. It's only crazy if you try to understand it. Otherwise, it's just absolute simplicity. Yeah, it's, it's all purity. at the same time. It's, <laughs> it's purity. But I can always just, there's like a millisecond of, yes, it makes sense, and then it's the mind, uh, yeah. know, and then there's... The defense mechanisms yes. come up until there aren't. And that won't have anything to do with you. But now, when you speak like this, it's, again, it sounds like I'm on the way there, and that this, what I'm going through right now, is part of. But that's your projection. There. That's not suggesting. There's okay. no suggestion that so you're on your way. Okay. Well, we just got through the fact that this yeah. isn't the end of any way. There's the. Hiding of this, the hiding of this, the hiding of this, the end of hiding of this. This was never anywhere else. I guess that I have to go through it a few more times. Absolutely not. <laughs> How do you get closer to what is already? 
just what seems to be happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, but that's true, isn't it? Yeah. There seems to be a getting closer. In the, as long as there's an individual, it's a part of a process. This is not a process. It's the end of something really happening. You can't say the end of something really happening is something really happening. It's not. So the individual always shifts between when there is something not certain, then it's more like fear. And at the moment when it's certain, it's like that, ah, oh, I can relax. And then again, it, if something is uncertain, it isn't clear, and then it's again in fear. Is this the, the, what the individual does? There is no individual. No. <laughs> so from this fear comes. Huh? Fear of death. Separation and death are the same thing. There is no separation, there is no death. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which death do you mean? The physical? The, the only death is the death of the individual. Mm. The only death is the death of separation, the end of separation. Mm. I tried to help a homeless for a time, and then I realized it's not really possible to help him. And then there was one thought that there is something that absolutely doesn't care if there is a homeless, or if there is a me, or if there is a person that is happy or unhappy. So that was a very short... Mm. Cleanse. Mm. And Famutu. Yeah, ah, okay. Is this. I'm not sure what Famutu means, but yeah. An assumption. An assumption. I would never use the word assumption. Mm -hmm. But you can claim certain aspects of what this is. Mm -hmm. And nothing does care. It's not that nothing cares, it's just, it's, it's really the other way around. Nothing is needed, nothing needs to change. Caring can arise, but nothing, this as it is, is already is ultimately free. Ultimate, like there's nothing beyond. It's like absolutely free. It's absolute freedom. And a homeless person, a suffering person, a happy person is absolute freedom appearing as that. So motion is completion. It's not, it's not, there's no need in the appearance for anything to arrive or become. It's already fulfilled, exactly as it is, without intention, unintentionally. There is no need? For this to become, uh -huh, okay. for the appearance to become anything, it's already fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So in that way, what you were describing, there's no need for it to be different, mm -hmm. because there's nothing actually wrong with it. Yes, that's, that's felt like that. Yeah, absolutely, but well, that's true, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That includes helping a homeless person, or not. Mm -hmm. But we don't really decide. There is no you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like that. So every time I try to think what... There the, isn't a you. Uh, okay. When I was thinking yeah. uh, what this could be, then I, that's I miss... That's what's happening. I miss, ah, okay, it's happening. But I don't miss anything. I just, there, I just... That, that's just part of the dream of the individual, that something needs to happen. That what's happening is real. 
what's happening is real, that experience hides this as it is. It is not real. That something's happening is real is a complete illusion. It's an illusion, meaning it has no reality at all. And the fear, and the fear that comes from... The fear? Yes, the fear that comes is a non-existing individual. <laughs> Um, so it's also appearance just. absolutely it's unconditional love fearing mm -hmm. uh -huh. could you explain please uh, why for example the chair where you are sitting now is not real <clears throat> oh, it's, uh, just not, it's just not the chair it's also the space the words, the question, the body, none of it is real. It's not unreal. It's not unreal? No. No, it appears. So it's real and unreal? Or, or, or it's neither real nor unreal. It's like a... A paradox. Shadow or a rainbow, for example. You can see a rainbow? No, no. Okay. If the individual is seeing a rainbow, it's real. So, <clears throat> there's somebody in there hearing these words, right? Yeah. All there is is sound. When nobody hears the words, it's silence sounding. Mm What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim Nesco, that's too far. <laughs> you forgot the other bit. What about me? <laughs> Now is a part of what is. I no, mean, it's all there is. Is? It's everything. It's all there is. There's no yeah. a part of what is. What is is nothing apart. It is and isn't. And and then if if it's happening to uh, leaving the room, for example, if it's ha if the flowers get up and walk no, away. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you if leaving the room is happening so the flowers are not anymore well that thought is that entire happening there's nothing other than that thought of that happening there is no possibility to create another happening that has a reality which one could theorize about there isn't another reality that thought, that happening, is everything. Please say it in, in another way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what I said. <laughs> what the individual does is it lives in a world of separate objects and subjects. <clears throat> so it gives the impression that there are other realities, other, other wares, other things, other instances, other than what's happening. That's a dream world. There's only what's happening. So the individual will see a hand, and it will say, that hand belongs to, and is that, and all the other things. The reality is, that is infinite handing, and there's nothing other than that. That's everything. That's everything. That's everything. Sound everything. There's only everything. There's no object. 
No. There's no thing. Um. Because there's no one. Uh. Thinging. Bezogen auf Zeit? Ja, same thing. Nein, ich meine, jetzt ist die Hand und im nächsten Moment der Fuß. Ja, yeah, if you like. Oder ist es immer alles? Absolutely. Also nicht nur jetzt und dann und dann und dann. Absolutely. Oder für, 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 for her, the hand and... Yeah, but see, there isn't a her. Yeah, so... No, there's only that. And that imagination of her hand and all that is everything. The individual likes to think there's other realities outside which it's separate from. Mm -hmm. Everything that arises is everything. There is no boundary. Yeah, there is no position to know something else from. Um, I know what you're saying. You don't know what I'm saying, just to be clear. <laughs> but I don't know what the question is. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I mean, just here. I know what you mean. You have not understood me, have I said? I have asked the question, but the answer is not coming. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, now if appearance here, millions of appearances. There's a dream. Every appearance thinks it's so you're not the only one. Absolutely. There aren't a million appearances. There's only what appears. For the for the one who. Yeah, you see, you go back again to an individual. Yeah, yeah. So there seems to be two realities. Mm -hmm. There's one where there's twenty different perspectives in the room. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the dream of the individual. It arises out of a position that knows itself as a center, and therefore there are all these other centers out there. That's a dream. Mm -hmm. That's a dream. It's an illusion. It's a trick. Not, not Bursley, but it's a trick. There aren't other positions, because it isn't the first position. There are no positions. Everything that arises is everything. There's nothing else. Right. To where, to whom, to what, to to no one. <laughs> but the arising is. <laughs> you want this to make sense or what? No, <laughs> I don't know. It's just what arises. What's happening? Now, I mean, I don't know. Now, arises something outside something. Yeah, but there is no outside. The outside of that thought about something. Mm -hmm. I can't take the word for granted, but somehow. So then, nothing makes sense. Absolutely. No word is useful. <coughs> Absolutely. There's just what's happening. There's no need. So we can go to the park. Well, there's no one to choose. <laughs> <laughs> but if going to the park happens, then that's what's happening. <laughs> Send us an SMS and a picture. She can then build when you unpack it. It's a secret shrine. No, that's very nice. Oh, it's it's unconditionally free, boundlessly free. Absolutely. So everything is fine? No, it's neither fine nor not fine. Okay. It's just what appears. Fine and not fine, good and bad and right and wrong, only arise in the story of the individual because it needs a path. It's on a journey to something better. When there's no one on a journey, then it's revealed that this has no intention. Doesn't need any. It's already complete. And what, and everything includes every thought, every feeling, every movement, all of it. This is great. This is bullshit. I'm afraid. I'm not. This is good. This is horrible. There are ghosts. There aren't ghosts. All of that is completion appearing. It's unconditional freedom appearing. It can appear as anything. This, are you aiming the reasoning mechanism 
There's there's no one here. That's not what I wanted to ask. <laughs> no, but you're asking if there's an intention. And for there to be an intention, there would have to be an experienced need that something needs to change. Mm. And that would only arise if there were an individual. So I just cut to the chase and said, there's no one here. Mm. There is no intention. Okay. There's just the responses. This is already complete. Because the, the question is, what needs to happen? Or what's, what, what can I do? Or any of those things. And the response is always, nothing needs to happen. Mm. There is no you. This is already complete. The individual can't help but have the experience of being on a journey. There is no journey. Every, every movement, every step, every thought, every action is the absolute happening. It doesn't actually move. It doesn't actually have a consequence. It's completion. When you say the absolute chairing, it's, it sounds like for me it's like you're, you're you're removing the reasoning mechanism from it, like mm -hmm. how what well that chair was made, how what well that was uh, bought, brought here. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, it's like just bang appearance. <clears throat> no, not at all. It it just doesn't have to separate the chair from the making and all the rest of it as something real. Mm. It's, just, it's just pointing out that the chair isn't real, nor is it unreal. But neither is the thought of how it was made, or the feeling that there's some intention here. It's, it's all inclusive. The only, the only thing that's being undermined is something that's already not. And that's the experience that what's happening is personal or real. That there's a central knower to it. That's a dream. It's completely unreal. But also... No, no. No, no, the individual is, is, is really completely unreal. Or maybe it's only real for itself. Absolutely. Well, that, that's the dream. To be not true. <laughs> yeah. The experience was no experience. Exactly. Yeah, now that's impossible. Be? What I'm talking about is impossible, but what you're talking about is really impossible. <laughs> the experience of no experience. Because what you're doing, <laughs> what you're doing is the individual is is so certain in its own own isness that it assumes that every there's an individual and everyone else, and it can't imagine what it would be like if there weren't anyone there. It has no idea what that's like, and it never will. It's just because here, um, well, there is no here, but. <laughs> There's since ages um, the comparison which should have been better or which I yeah would be better if I don't do this it would be easier and whatever and so um, sometimes it gets lighter also I mean if it only sucked it wouldn't be a problem the problem is it sucks sometimes and doesn't suck other times and that's the problem. If you were always depressed, that wouldn't be an issue. It's that you're sometimes happy, that's the problem. The individual is so invested in the experience of itself that it's almost a disappointment for this to be it. For all of its effort and all the things it did to have been worthless or useless. That it's all ready. And it's not for it. They can't have it, know it, own it. To try to use this as a therapy, though, hoping that that's going to happen would be very unintelligent. Oh, okay. Just, just saying. <laughs> yes. I have a sad 
idea that by uh, watching my thoughts and watching um, them coming and going, watching uh, um, the sense of I, you can't do that. Can't do it. Well, I is the claim of I is I am the subject. So, what subject is watching the I? Just the awareness, the sort of awareness, and that that we can sort of break through and. My plan. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. My escape plan. <laughs> There's no one to escape. Somehow that as a process would be more fruitful than just completely being involved in thoughts and not really thinking about them. <clears throat> that arises out of the experience of the individual that there needs to be something fruitful. Yeah. yeah. That something needs to happen. That it's not okay. That it's not already complete. That's an illusion. Even the experience of incompleteness is complete. There's nothing incomplete about the experience of incompleteness. <laughs> There's nothing that needs to change. It's just an idea. <clears throat> no, it's an experience. You just described yeah. that's what's happening. That is, that is perfection. It has no opposite. It doesn't need to change. It's purity. Appearing is that experience. Why not? Why shouldn't freedom appear as the experience of being incomplete? For me, it's the idea that something will... I know. ...wake up. I know. Something will... Yeah? ...more vividly clear. And yeah. More. That's what the individual always needs, more. There isn't enough. There isn't enough for the individual. The individual is like a bowl with no bottom. <laughs> but there's still a sort of sense that awareness is more. What we're discussing, better. what we're discussing now, isn't a sense. It will never be within your experience. It will never fulfill what you're describing. Sorry, I lost. It will never fulfill what I'm describing. The, the, the experience or the feeling that being aware, changing things, being distanced and all that is somehow going to bring you to an end. That experience will never be fulfilled. That experience is duality. It's an illusion. <clears throat> there isn't two. If there's somebody in here, in there, looking out here, that experience will be dissatisfying. There'll be separation. There'll be, there'll be the need to be a good person, the need to ask the right question, the need to behave in a certain way, because there's a position there which recognizes another real position. Separation, which then that energy wants to overcome. That'll never, ever happen. What the individual can't imagine, because all of its imaginations of the solution of the problem of itself have itself in it. It can't imagine a reality without itself. Even the effort to imagine a reality without itself arises out of itself. And so... The suggestion is, there is no individual, and it will never know that. Separation is an illusion. There isn't anyone in there looking over here. What's being perceived is everything. There aren't two. 
there's only unicity. And you can't have that. You can't grasp it. You can't know it. You never will. Nobody does. And there is no need to. Absolutely. So many times we've talked about meditation and the cultivation of the Not here. <laughs> no. This isn't a teaching, and it's not a spiritual message. There's absolutely nothing in this for you. It, it doesn't even recognize you as real. So many people seem to arrive at... Those are teachers. Teachers or... Teachers that are there to help you. They tell you you should be aware, meditate, listen to vegetarian music, eat white rice. (laughs) Be aware. They ask questions which you can't deny because you don't know who you are, saying, are you ever not aware? Or things like, oh... That sounds really profound. (laughs) Sorry. I'm not judging any teachers. Nobody's doing it. There's no teacher to judge. It's just what happens. The message here is, awareness is the same thing as consciousness, is the same thing as knowing. They're all a part of a dream of duality. That there is no need. That need arises out of the illusion that something happening is real. This is radical non-duality. It's not non-duality for you. It's (laughs) radical non-duality. There is no you. It's already not to. There's no you to bring about not to. It's already not to. I guess I don't have any problem with it. It's not. It's just, I, so many people seem to have done meditation, got, you know, they did the hours and hours of meditation, and then eventually something sort of broke through. Mm cultivated awareness and then you know, we listened to talks for so long, you know, came to talks again and again and something eventually breaks so, isn't it? Well, I understand what you're saying. That's not an offer here. There's nothing on offer here. There's no recognition that there's a real individual with free will and choice that could choose to do anything to find what's missing. That's just simply a dream that arises out of the experience that there's true duality, which can be overcome. The message here is there isn't. There's not two. The appearance of separation is the absolute appearing. The art process is like awareness, cultivation, or meditation. Aren't they so that people can let go of their mistaken duality quicker? I mean, the process is to attach the experience of I to awareness. 
then there are certain realizations that arise as the I realizes itself to be out of existence, independent of the body and the brain. So it realizes God. It realizes that everything that happens, because it is then the awareness that arises, that everything happens within it. It is no longer affected by what happens. It is the purveyor or the overwatcher of everything that happens, the knower, the supreme knower of everything that's happening. That's the experience. So what? So what? So that, sounds good. So you mean that what people get is the result of that? Absolutely. That's that that's the goal of, of self-inquiry, meditation. Well, not of meditation, but self-inquiry. Yeah. But then there's, like what you're saying, is the point beyond this, which is... The end of me. It's yeah. much... See, when that happens, the the realizations are, are, are quite... Many faulty. I mean, there, there, there are a lot of them. So what you can share and what you can tell people about truth and reality and everything is really quite broad and big and complicated. It, get, it can get quite complicated. The longer these teachers are around, the more complicated their, teachers be, their teaching can become because the more distant they become to the experience of being an attached individual. For me, it's sort of traveling in the psychic dream of the individual. That's just what it seems like. So what? It only, it only matters in a reality where there's good and bad, and right and wrong, and better and worse. It only works within that reality. And the suggestion in this meeting is that reality only arises in the dream of the individual, in the dream of separation, and that in reality, there is no separation. There is no separation. There is no real here and no real there. So there is no meaning or purpose. There is no free will and choice. There is no intention. It is already complete. And that includes doing all that other stuff, which nobody does. It's not as I'm just trying to sort of advertise spiritual paths. It's more, you know... It makes more sense. An extra hint as to it makes total more sense sort of than what's being shared here. Yeah. It totally fits. Yeah, it totally fits yeah. to your experience because what it's saying is there is duality, there is something wrong with you, and if you're a really good person, you can find something better. Totally fits to the story and the need of the individual and to the experience that this is incomplete, and that it has intention. Why not? It's a part of the dream of the individual. There is nothing here that's trying to get rid of that. There's no judgment about what happens on that level about that. Bad drivers or something else. But trying to find God and trying to attach and all this. So why not? Nobody does it. You didn't choose to come here. You don't choose to go to whoever you go to and learn these other things. It's just what happens. It doesn't matter. Literally, it doesn't matter. It has no consequence. And there's no suggestion here that you shouldn't do that. I guess why it is, I'm thinking, you're explaining these things to us now. And... Uh, so what would be the additional things that I could do to, to you know, I mean, bring it on a bit better? You're missing the main you point. Got to There's no you. Okay. <sighs> Come with that then. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll focus on that one. I'll be up to this then. There, there, there's, no, there's no choice. There isn't anyone in there. When this is... When this is heard as concepts, it will be applied to the individual will take it on board as something it then knows and try to apply it. Always. Absolutely. Yes. There's no individual. Yes. There's no one that has that free will and choice to or not to. 
trying not to apply it's exactly the same energy as applying it. This is either heard, recognized, or not. And it makes no difference. There's nothing better. There's nothing special here. There's no authority. There's nothing special. There's complete ordinariness. Boring ordinariness. (laughs) It's not wantable. I appreciate what you're sharing. I appreciate it. So this does not come from the brain, right? The brain is just a story within this. Yeah, there's not even there is no brain. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy that we actually don't have anything to do with it. Totally. It has nothing to do with you, (laughs) because there isn't one. Yeah. Yeah.